we get so attached to these things that we know one day we're going to give up. And there is an aspect of fully living it, fully living it while it's here and really being immersed in the present. And that's that's where all these books and teachings about presence is. Um, but it seems societally we have this... Uh, Programming? We, we, yeah, we, we don't <laughs> mind we, or we barely notice why we get so wrapped into the physical, why we fall so deeply in love with the thing that we deep down inside only have reference points of it will end one day. But what does ending mean? It's cleaning the story. It's almost hitting the, the reset button on the stories. Yeah. And those stories live on in other people. And it's very interesting how attached to our life and the, the body, the way it looks, the way it feels and makes us uh, feel when we're sick, when we're feeling healthy, when we're feeling aroused, when we're feeling down. It's so interesting how we how attached we get to that. But it's also just saying it's interesting that we get attached to all that doesn't mean there's no intrinsic value in the attachment and the letting go process. You have and, to have them both. Mm -hmm. You can't. It look, could you be born enlightened without having to have gone through the trials and tribulations of developing consciousness, figuring out what works and what doesn't work? No, not going to happen. Even Buddha, all of them came in and had to go through the trials and tribulations of life. They all had to learn a new language. They all had to have parents. Not every one of their parents was so loving as Buddhas, let's say. Um, you know, you, you, you have to have evil or good has no meaning, paradoxically. Mm -hmm. The degree of evil in the world is usually what it takes to reorient ourselves to what good really is. Think about it. Without evil... To support good, there would be no way for us to know what was good or whether we were doing good. We would just be unconscious. So we have to go through a level of ignorance in order to, to really actually develop our own level of consciousness. If we don't learn how to eat better, it doesn't matter if everybody else does. Your mom and dad could eat really good. That doesn't mean you're emulating them. If we don't learn how to improve our technique as an athlete, we don't get better. And oftentimes you get hurt. You know, I used to be a kickboxer and a boxer. I got hurt when I made mistakes. And it really, it really inspired me to study harder. <laughs> when I raced motocross, I got hurt really bad a lot of times. Six major concussions, broken bones, internal bleeding. I mean, I was... I wanted to win, so I rode the very edge of myself. Mm. And sometimes I met rocks and trees and gullies and riverbeds, and it made me wake up. The pain mm. teacher said, hey, Paul, don't be so wild. Find the edge. There's a place where skill mm. becomes craziness, and you just cross the line. You mm. got to get better at finding the line of skill, and that requires mentors and coaches. The point I'm making is, all the stuff that we look out in the world and see but don't like is what it takes to crack the egg to let the soul of us come out and see beyond the material body and to grow into creating more love and more beauty and more harmony because it has a distinct realization of the opposite polarity of those things. What, what we're stuck with is that we don't have enough mentors. We don't have enough Eckhart Tolles and Deepak Chopra's and, and you know, um, a long list of people, but, you know, Greg Braden, Ben Stewart, uh, who, you know, all the people that we look at and say, wow, that's a fairly well put together human being, but they get no airtime, right? We got idiots like Donald Trump, and I'm not saying he's less God than me. I'm just saying we got people that really don't belong as leaders in society and our whole world is run by corporate entities that have nothing but a profit motive and couldn't really give a shit about you. They're willing to sell you out from underneath yourself. So we're sort of trapped in a machine that's designed to maintain unconsciousness because it keeps people profitable. 
And if we gave as much airtime to the people that are deceptive and don't really have any concept of spirituality because they're trapped in scientific materialism, the whole world would begin to change right away. I mean, if Donald Trump spent $2 trillion on airtime for real educators on how to eat, move, be healthy, meditate, breathe, we would never have to worry about these kinds of pandemics. And if we did, those intelligent people would come up with vaccines that are very safe, and it would be back to playing again. But instead, everything's got to have this dark underbelly to it where we keep people trapped in their own unconsciousness and keep educating them in ways that stop them from really growing. So you could say that just as a chicken cannot come into the world until it's strong enough to break its shell, because if it doesn't break its shell, it won't be able to deal with gravity and it'll die. Mm -hmm. we, we are all in a great big egg and People that have ulterior motives have made the shell really thick and tight. That's what COVID was. Someone put us in a real tight cocoon. Some of us said, fuck this. I'm not going to, I got to break out of this shit. I don't even believe in this cocoon. You guys can be cocooned all you want to be, but I'm not playing that game. And I already play the health game. So I don't have to worry about some virus that nobody even knows is real. It's just a bunch of shit on television. People believe everything they fucking see on television. So you see, the orientation is some people have to meet God by getting a shot and dying from it. Some people have to meet God by getting depressed and becoming suicidal because they believe the narrative. Some of us meet God by going outside and looking at the sun and holding on to our children and orienting ourselves towards living in a way that if emulated by others would extinguish a lot of the horse shit. But you see, the polarities are alive, and the point I'm making is everything that's going on in the world creates the resistance that's necessary for us to build a mind strong enough to learn to create what it wants instead of what it doesn't want. Dude, and we that have is to do that collectively. So I gotta run to the toilet before I piss myself. I'm very yeah. Sorry. Go go do it, and I'll comment on what you just said, and you then do I'll, that. I'll be right in. back. Right on, yeah. I'm going to go have a good piss. Oh, uh, yeah. Shake it a bunch. <laughs> so, uh, so what I love for the audience, you know, what I would love to mention here is that we're, we're talking with a holistic health professional. And we've talked mostly today about the uh, really just the, the concept of how do you know what it is you're even supposed to be doing on this planet? How do you identify those things that are actually causing for not just health issues, but what are health issues? How does that mirror back to us who and what we are and what kind of path we're on? And what I love about Paul is he has people. So I'll be meeting up with him, uh, a couple of the good friends, one being Kyle Kingsbury at the end of August. And I'm in this text group with all of them, and Kyle Kingsbury has this. Um, I've seen Paul take th him through mandalas before, and several mandalas that he'll have people like working on their own personal myth and what that myth actually is. And understanding your story and your myth is akin to understanding the timeless part of yourself, not just the timely part that will change here and there and everywhere. Uh, all the time, those time timely things, those things that are immediate and urgent are always changing. But it seems like the timeless, mythological, allegorical things that come out more as artwork, they're speaking deeper to what health is in general. And so what it sounds like is that health is a part of our path. So health is a part of our path. It is a tool to be more efficient along our path. But at the end of the day, it's the path that we're walking. Sometimes health is a destination point, not, not a final destination, but a destination point in our path. But we don't just live to not die for a long time. And we don't just live just to feel good and healthy. As much as that's amazing, and not dying for a while is also amazing, but there's something deep about how health supports us in learning and growing along the path of life. Make sure you all head over to benjosephstewart.com, become a member, 
You'll have access to the growing library of deeper dives where I talk about all the stuff that I really can't talk about on YouTube. Make sure you get involved in the Discord chat. That's where a lot of the conversation is happening, talking about new theories, being able to interweave into the greater conversation that is how we awaken infinity. That's our highest potential. And I just want to remind you, you are the most powerful technology ever known to creation. Wield it like an artist with a conscience.